All right, so I put this slide together. I'm not gonna, I didn't get time to do the finance numbers, so I'll do the finance numbers next week if I can pull that together. But I thought I would just give us an update on the soul winning numbers and also just a reminder to, to get into the soul winning. If you haven't already, like, or you feel like you're just sort of falling off the bandwagon, you know, this is a reminder for you that, you know, that this is one of the main things of our church, right? One of the main things of our church is that we wanna reach this area. That's why we do door to door soul winning because you know if we just left it to the internet ministry like i'd only be reaching you know people in america right that's probably the only people right now that listen to my sermons online but we want to reach this neighborhood we want to reach punch bowl and canterbury and the only way we're going to reach this neighborhood is if we go and knock the doors right so that we can go talk to the people so yeah definitely try and encourage you guys to um, get involved if you can um, and, and, and make it a priority because this is uh, one of the main reasons why this church exists to preach the gospel to every creature. I like to every three months just following the financial years. So that's why I've got financial year 17 Q3. Um, just to give you guys an update on, on how the soul winning is going and how the numbers compare to, to last quarter because so we can see whether it's going up or down, meaning you know, is, are, are more people going soul winning or are less people going soul winning. So I keep these charts um, I, I, I count all the, we count all the attendance each week uh, so we can see what's happening. And, you know, we always see, you know, ever since the start of our church that that attendance is, is very inconsistent. You can see that the numbers go up and down each week because we're just not consistent. You know, we just don't have a consistent attendance. So that's something that we need to reflect on, you know, reflect on in your own lives. If you're not consistent in your church attendance, you know, are you doing, you know, what um, God expects of you? So... The church attendance, you know, is going up, which is great. The trend is, is going up, which is good. Uh, and I hope it continues to go up. You know, it's a bittersweet thing that, you know, Kevin is going to be leaving us because that's like a quarter of our church leaving <laughs> to the Sunshine Coast. But it's for a good reason. But all the more reason for us to try and replace that number, right? Um, and obviously Michael not being with us too is, uh, you know, is, is a sad thing. But uh, he'll be back in, in three months. Um, it's unfortunate that he's going to miss uh, the starting of um, what might be known as the church in Caloundra. I'm not sure yet because I don't think he knows. I don't think Kevin knows what um, suburb he's necessarily going to be in. But um, I think he has decided to follow the same naming convention. So it's like, that's kind of cool. Um, so attendance is going up. Soul winning is, you can see it's slightly going up but still very flat and it's still, you know, the spikes every now and then. So, you know, I'd love to see, you know, when I pull up these numbers next quarter, I'd love to see that red line just shift up a little bit, you know, because there's a spike, you know, every time we do something like this of people wanting to go soul winning. So um, that's, that's the quarter. This, this number is, oh, sorry. So this, this, these are the numbers since, since the beginning, right? So since the beginning, it's going up. But see, these numbers are not so good, right? So in the quarter, it's sort of stayed flat. So that means like we haven't really had an increase in attendance. You can see it's still really inconsistent. Um, and even with the soul, see the soul winning, the numbers are consistent because there, there's a core group of us that go every week, but um, not everyone's involved. And that's what we are trying to change, right? We've got to change that. Uh, so that was uh, just for those three months, April and June. I, I figured out that I could actually tweak these lines and everything, so that's why it looks a bit nicer, because I found out that Google Sheets now actually allows you to change like the fonts and everything like that and the lines, so I can make it nice and bold and clear for you guys. Now, one thing I wanted to do, these are I'll just, just I'll, I'll go through the numbers, but before I go through the numbers, I just want to point out uh, I just want to go through each of the statuses just so that we're all clear um, what the expectation is of each status because I think as time goes on you know there's a status there and everyone's defining the different statuses differently you know like the ones that kind of blend like you might leave a door and you're like is that gave a tract or is that brief discussion and things like that so I'm not I'm not saying this because I believe anyone's doing it wrong and you you know I'm trying to you know correct you or anything. I'm just saying like if, if we're if we're tracking the numbers, let's at least all have the same mindset on what these different statuses mean, so that when we track these numbers, we know what what you know we're all uh, recording it as the same depending on that experience. So not home is um, is self-explanatory, right? Now. Not interested is when they, you know, they don't want the tract, they don't want to talk to you, right? Um, that's sort of self-explanatory too. Where it gets a bit, bit cloudy is 
with, with these next three. So what, what, how do I see the difference between gave a tract and a brief discussion? Now the reason why we, we added these, because before we didn't have brief discussion, right? We just had gave a tract and then heard the gospel. But I felt like it was too much of a stretch, like because you might give the, a tract to somebody and they don't even want to talk to you. You give a tract, you have a brief talk. You gave a tract, there was a bit of back and forth, but you didn't really get into the scriptures. And then you get into the scriptures, that's heard the gospel and in-depth discussion. So I kind of just added that just to give us an idea, you know, what sort of the blend was. So this is how I see it, right? And obviously it might have changed since I first did this, but this is what, how I'm seeing it right now as me and Michael, because we, we kind of talk about it as we go soul winning. And he's like, would you like that as a gave a tract or a brief discussion? And we're trying to like get on the same page again. So the way I see gave a tract is when you pass somebody a tract, but, but um, uh, and you might say like a 10 second spiel. Like if you've been soul winning with me, like today, you know, I might give a tract and I might say, hey, you know what, you know, uh, a lot of people think going to heaven is by good works, but you know, and I give them one verse and then I go. I still consider that as gave a tract. I don't consider that as brief discussion. So that's kind of the confusion there. So that, so e even if you gave a tract and they didn't say anything and you gave a tract and you said a little bit, I still consider that gave a tract. So that's just gave a tract together. Brief discussion is if there's a bit of interchange. Because you know sometimes you, you, you give a track to somebody, you talk to them, they might ask a question, but then they don't really give you the time to go into it further. That's what I consider a brief discussion, is that there's actually a bit of exchange. There might be one question asked and you clarify a few things, but then you didn't really get deep into it. That, that's how I consider brief discussion. Now heard the gospel or in-depth discussion that's where you, you, get, so you start getting into the scriptures. You're showing them Bible verses. You're talking, you're explaining. That, that's kind of like a good conversation is heard the gospel and in-depth discussion. Following up, not saved. Now, what I want to just clarify here is, because obvious, you know, what it means, right? They're, they're not saved and you want to follow up with them. Now, this is not that you want somebody else to follow up with them. You know, uh, one day it might be that, but right now as I work a full-time job, it's kind of like we're all going to have to be responsible for our own follow-up. So this following up not saved pin is there for, for you, you know, as the soul winner that you mark it as orange so you can remember where that house is um, when you want to go back. Now, if you don't plan on going back, then leave it as heard the gospel and in-depth discussion, right? So that we don't have all these following up not saved pins that, that nobody's following up on. If you do plan on going back to them, then mark it orange. And if you do go back and then you don't plan on, once you stop going back, then mark it as heard the gospel or saved, hopefully, of, of whatever. So I just want to be clear there that, that that pin is not, oh, like you've talked to somebody and they're like, oh, we'll come back next week. Oh, I'll mark them as following up, not saved. No, like, you know, unless you're going to go back, right, then you know, mark it as whatever it was. So that's what that orange is. Um, now going on to saved, right? Now saved, now I understand that, you know, with the topic of calling upon the name of the Lord, obviously I've talked about it with you guys in this church, that somebody doesn't necessarily have to pray with you in order to get saved. They might have said it in their head. They might have went away and, and prayed on their own or, or called upon the Lord later on. But just for the sake of these numbers, my standard is that saved is somebody that you've given the gospel to, they believe it, and they were willing to pray with you. So if somebody, and, and me and Michael have done this too, where, so, where somebody has, they've accepted it and, and you say, hey, you know, is this, is this something you'd like to do now? Would you like to call upon the name of the Lord? Um, I might not say those exact words, right? But, you know, do they want to pray right now and, and ask Jesus to save them? And they say, you know what, I'm not comfortable. I'll do it in my own time. We don't mark that as saved. We mark that as heard the gospel in depth discussion, just because we don't know whether they did it, right? But if they're willing to pray with us, then that's when we mark it as saved. So just so it's clear, I, I, I understand that if they don't pray with you, that doesn't mean they didn't get saved, but just making it clear that here, that's, that's how I would like those numbers recorded, that if somebody prays with you, then you mark that as saved. Now we put already saved different because when we started going out, right, the reason why already saved is there is because when somebody was saved already, we couldn't differentiate between whether it was saved because we talked to them or whether they were already saved. So I wanted to be able to differentiate those numbers. That's why the already saved status was created so that we could differentiate between somebody that we had talked to that wasn't saved, that got saved, or somebody that we talked to that was already saved, right? And then the rest is, is other ones we've added along the way. Follow up saved so 
The reason why I added that one is because I wanted to be able to see the total number of people that we've gotten saved since, but if we had marked them as follow up only and didn't differentiate between not saved and saved, I didn't know whether to count all those follow up numbers into the saved number. And then that's why there's follow up already saved too, to, to, to sort of put those apart. And then church, church member is if somebody happens to live in the area, you can mark their house as a church member. So we know that person lives there. And then the others we've added along the way as well, because, you know, the reason why commercial is there is because you might go down a street and there might be a, a, like, a, like a line of shops, but on the map, it looks like somebody's not knocked to that area, right? So that's why we added the commercial pin. So if you're going down a street and there's businesses, just mark a few commercial pins to let everybody know that's businesses along there. So, so when we look at the map, we're not thinking nobody's gone there, right? That's the idea of the commercial pin. The language barrier pin, uh, we, we sort of created that one because I wanted to see how many people were not interested because they didn't understand the language we were speaking. So that's why that one's there. So if you get the feeling that you're talking to somebody and you feel like, hey, that might have been somebody that was willing to talk, but just didn't understand what I was saying, mark it as language barrier so that you know, it doesn't skew the number of not interested. And then aggressive is somebody that if you were to knock on their door again, they would be upset that you came back, right? So we might have different uh, sort of standards on what that is, but that's how I think of it. I think I knock on this person's door and if I feel that if I came back and knocked on their door, they would be upset that I came back, then I mark them as aggressive. But if they're just like, oh, not interested, but you know, if I came back like six months later or 12 months later, they wouldn't be upset, then that's, that's what I consider aggressive. So hopefully that clears some things up so that when you go soul winning, you get a better idea of what status to put. And I'll put this video on YouTube as well so that if you're ever wondering, you can, you can watch this, this, uh, this numbers update video again. So let's just look at the numbers. Obviously, you know, because the soul winning has dropped a bit, you, know, we, we've, um, you, know, the, the, you can see the change there. So in this quarter, um, you can look at all the numbers. Total doors knocked was 2,333, less than the last three months. So we have had a drop in, in soul winning, um, you know, which is not good. But what's interesting is even though we've knocked less doors, there's been more people saved. So you see how there's not necessarily a correlation with knocking more doors to getting more people, just because we can't control that, right? So isn't that interesting that even though less soul winning, um, oh, I didn't get the average soul winners per week for quarter four, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know whether there was less people as well. Um, Actually, I don't know if there was less people. Yeah, I don't know, because there was a Wednesday group going as well. So it might have been more. It might have just been that there was more people going, or same number of people going, less doors knocked, but um, you know, one person more saved in this quarter than last quarter. So there was 15 instead of 14, plus the two um, from follow-up saved. So that was 17. So that's great. So you know, we're getting people saved, even in, 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 a, in a country that's as hard as Australia. There are people out there willing to listen to the gospel. So those are the key stats at the bottom. If you can see the things that I marked, just sort of some key numbers. Total doors knocked, 2,333. How many doors we've knocked so far since this church has started? Almost 25,000. And this is only with about 12 people. And I say people because if somebody goes twice a week, that's counted as two. So really there's, there's maybe only about eight or nine people um, going each week. But that's 25,000 doors with nine people, 10 people going each week. So if we could get that soul winning number to like 20 or 30 people, man, like we could be knocking like 70,000 doors uh, in, 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 in a couple of years. So just think about the impact that you have on that number as well. If you're thinking about, you know, I don't make a difference. And even if you can't talk, even if you can't talk as a soul winner, right? And, and you're the one doing the talking, don't be discouraged. Like if you're a silent partner, you're new, come along as a silent partner because often what happens at the soul winning time is it might be like me and Michael, you know, and, and you know, I love catching up with Michael, going soul winning and everything like that. But at the same time, like we can both do the talking. So if we had two silent partners come with us on Sunday afternoon, I could take somebody and Michael could take somebody and we would knock twice as many doors. So just keep that in perspective. If you're a bit hesitant and you think, oh, I don't know what to say, you don't know what, you don't need to know what to say if you start soul winning because you just come as a silent party, you don't say anything. You just need to come and, and listen and just learn and then just, uh, you know, just see, see what happens. So total doors knocked, uh, total doors answered, 
uh, 11, 1189. So that's just, that's just taking away the not home and commercials and stuff like that. So total heard the gospel and follow up already saved. Um, so basically what that number is to show is if you take away the, commercial, the businesses, you take away the people that weren't home, what percentage of people will actually have a conversation with you? And the reason why I point out that number is because I want to show people like that there are people out there that don't mind talking. It's not like it's just 0.01% or something. It's at 11%. So what I'm, what I'm trying to show is that when you go door knocking and you take away the not homes, like the people that are not home, one in 10 people almost will stop and have a conversation with you. That's what the numbers are showing. I know in some neighborhoods, you know, you, like, like today, like I went soul winning for two hours with, with Alex and we didn't get into a conversation, right? But so I know like there, there are some neighborhoods like that and Earlwood seems to be like that. It's all these old people that have been there for a while that they're, they're sick of people knocking on their door. Um, but hey, even in Earlwood, we've had people saved, right? So it was worth going to Earlwood to get 17 people saved. Uh, oh, sorry, 16 people saved. So that's why I'm showing that percentage, just to sort of encourage you that it's not that, it, you know, it's not really that difficult to get into a conversation. Um, and even the number of, compared to the number of uh, people that are talking to us and the number of people getting saved, it's still hovering, ever since our church started, it's still hovering at the same number, about 1% to 2%. Isn't that interesting? That It's like every, every 100 or 200 people, sorry, 100 or 50 people you talk to, our church talks to, it's almost like one is getting saved. If you take away, you know, the doors that you knock that are not home, people are not home. And then the last number is, you know, I mean, that number is going up because I think in, in Earlwood, there's a lot more people that, you know, don't like people coming on knocking on the door, but it's still less than 1%, you know. Um, you know, last quarter it was 0.84% of people that were aggressive, you know, of people that actually answered the door. Um, but from all time, it's still less than half a percent. So that means, you know, of, to knock 200 doors, right, there'll be one person that will be upset with you. But just to put that in perspective, look at, see how I've got uh, in quarter three, right? I didn't do the numbers for quarter four, like uh, this, that there, this one. So I did this one and this one, right? So my point is, if one out of every 200 doors somebody is upset at you, but in a quarter, in quarter three, right, each soul winner knocked about 200 doors, that means you're only running into somebody that's upset with you once every three months. I mean, that's not so bad, is it? You know, you, you, go, door, you go soul winning for three months and you get one person that's kind of like, go away, don't come back kind of thing. It's like, so just keep that in mind, right? Hopefully that encourages you and, you know, that, that this is a reminder as well for you guys to get involved in the soul winning so that next quarter we can look at this and go, yeah, look at these spikes, look at these numbers going up, look at more people getting saved, more people getting talked to, more soul winners. That's what we want in, on all the, all the measurements. All right? So hopefully that's, uh, that, that those numbers are encouraging you, to you and um, gives you a bit of an update on what's happening there.